does it mean to strive for the highest achievement? What psychological factors contribute to your pursuit of reaching your highest achievable potential? Today, the concept of success is a buzzword, just as it was a virtue in ancient Greece. What is it about being successful that is so eternal and so valuable to us humans? What is it about human psychology that compels us to seek success, sometimes to the point of obsession, even recklessness? The answer depends on what you think of when you talk about success. You see, there are three different definitions through which we define this elusive concept of success. Listen to them and decide which one resonates with you the most. There's a cultural definition of success, which is represented by money, fame, social status or power. It's the kind of success that society tells us we need and want. Now, this kind of success is what we could call value neutral. It's not inherently viable. Your life could get worse even by having these things, or it could get better. Then we have success like the dictionary defines it, simply the ability to achieve your aims. This is still basically value neutral. We can have healthy aims or unhealthy aims. If your aim is to seek revenge on your enemy and you succeed, does that make you a successful person? Well, technically it does, though it's not a very valuable or helpful direction. Then there's another idea of success. When you take the time that most people don't take to flip your perspective and define success as a continually growing relationship between your hard work and your fulfillment, then it's a life-changing perspective to have because it's inherently valuable. Tom Morris is a philosophy professor at Notre Dame University. In his book, A New Philosophy of Success, he reminds us that the people who attain true success in their lives are people who enjoy a good measure of both fulfillment and happiness as they invest themselves in worthwhile pursuits. Now make a pause here and think how many people can you think of in your circle, in your life, whom you have met, who can say they have attained this kind of true success. It's not that common, right? Which is why we call it uncommon success. It's a kind of success which is defined by a balance between happiness and hard things. And now you might think that happiness and hard things seem like complete opposites, but they actually feed each other to create this true uncommon success. Uncommon success is the process of going through the hard work of pursuing and achieving something that matters to you and makes you happy. So then the question becomes, what matters? To some extent, you get to decide that. You get to decide what matters. So it might be that the cultural ideas of success like fame, money and power suit you. But there's almost a secret understanding amongst all humans as to what really matters. There are some jarring testimonials from some of humanity's most successful people that reveal the potential shallowness of cultural definitions of success like money, power and fame. There are unavoidable deep human needs for this uncommon success. Uncommon successes are things like family, relationships, freedom, stability and creativity, to name a few. Larry King, the American television host and successful man by many accounts, said, basically, what it comes down to is that I love what I do. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for fame. And that's it, basically. It's as simple as that. An incredibly wealthy, powerful and typically successful person has said directly, that he doesn't do it for those things. He does it for the love of the thing itself. As Larry King says, it's more successful to follow something you love and makes you happy. In the rest of this video, and potentially to a second one that will follow, we'll explore the path to attaining this sort of value, positive and balanced kind of success. The kind of success that seems to matter most to all of us. The path has three main steps. The first one is to choose a bold goal. The second one is to construct routines that move you in the direction of your goal. And the third one is to consistently execute on those routines. 
In this video, we'll explore how you can achieve step one, choosing a bold goal. And by the way, these are not random steps that came in my mind. It's the mirror of a repeated pattern played out by the most fulfilled people. And it's a pattern you'll find in most books about success and self-help. It might not even be such a stretch to say that all self-help literature preaches the same fundamental ideas that focus and discipline on the things you love leads to a feeling of success. Now let's think of something else. What kind of person would you ask for help on how to be successful? It might seem counterintuitive to take advice on success from a prisoner, but life behind bars often shapes people in surprising ways. It seems to push people to realize worldly wisdom and internal truths. Fyodor Dostoevsky was an ex-prisoner who wrote a novel on the wisdom he gained while in prison. On goal, he said that, without some goal and some effort to reach it, no man can live, which represents that hard work part of the uncommon success equation we talked about. But it also shows us something directional about the hard work, a goal. We must have goals to guide our actions and energies, as Tom Morris writes in his book. Without a target to shoot at, our lives are literally aimless. Without something productive to do, without positive goals and a purpose, a human being languishes. And then one of two things happen. Aimlessness begins to shut a person down in spiritual lethargy and emptiness. Or the individual lashes out and turns to destructive goals just to make something happen. So what we get from Dostoevsky and Morris is that deliberate, well planned goals are integral to uncommon success. Because we need to know what it is that we want to do with our lives and we need something to aim at. Just like shooting an arrow, we need an intention and a direction. Otherwise, it's a useless, unmeasurable exercise. Imagine just working hard on anything and everything that makes you happy. The gardening, a blog post, your friends, baking a chocolate cake, bird watching, amongst many other things that you might have in your mind. You'd be happy, sure, but successful? Maybe not. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind here. The first one is that our goal need not to be very narrow because, as you remember, is the first step of a long journey. We don't want our goal to be very, very narrow because we will have to change our personality many times along the way. An uncommonly successful life is defined by the ability to adapt to uncommon experiences. So we will have to adapt, we will have to change. Then the question becomes, how do you plan to choose your initiating goal? And let's be real, something made you click this video, maybe the title, maybe the thumbnail, I don't know, but something that probably makes you toy with the idea of following a design path to success. And if you're thinking of that, then you're probably in a blurry place in life right now. You're probably feeling lost. So how do you choose a direction when you feel lost? So let's go back to look at the world's most successful people and see what we can mirror from their lives. J.K. Rowling is famous for her widely successful Harry Potter stories, but almost equally as famous for her story of rejection. Time and time again she was turned away by publishers. Year after year she faced the hardship of a low income and rejection. Yet publishing the book must have meant something deep to her, otherwise she wouldn't have continued. She had a simple, specific goal and yet ambitious goal that meant a lot to her. Oprah Winfrey started life with considerable uncommon challenges. She was abused by her family and became pregnant at 14, losing the baby soon after birth. However, after her father helped her get to school, she found that she had an aptitude for public speaking and empathy. She took drama classes and stuck to her core passion of helping people for the rest of her skyrocketing career. Overcoming her past day by day, Oprah continued to follow a specific vision and feeling to help people and be a philanthropic personality. She was ambitious, focused, and must have felt something moving in her to overcome her early challenges. We can see a pattern emerging here, a three-point criteria in particular. The first one is that the goal must feel intrinsically rewarding to you. 
The second one is that the direction must be ambitious, a little stretch beyond where you currently are. And the third one is that both the goal and the direction must be specific, detailed and focused. Let's have a look at the inner workings of each part. Why is feeling intrinsically rewarding so important to a goal being successful? Well, we all intuitively know the answer to this. You move towards what you are interested in regardless of money, status, fame, power or anything external. Intrinsically rewarding things nurture motivation despite the odds and despite the unpredictabilities of life. And sure, you move towards things that other people may peer pressure you into following as well, but the motivation runs dry at some point if you do that. If you follow extrinsically rewarding ventures, you might tend to do the bare minimum and nothing more. Nothing that will help you to go further than good and become successful. As Ayn Rand puts it in her book, The Fountainhead, you must be the kind of man who can get things done. But to get things done, you must love the doing and the secondary consequences. Life is uncertain. The future is even more uncertain. If we pin our hopes of success on some arbitrary hope that the future will reward us in some way, like through our family, our friends, our social circle, then we're pinning our happiness on something dangerously unpredictable, something we have no control over how it will unfold. The next step is to ask, how do we find an intrinsically rewarding goal? Well, surprisingly, it's not always going to be something you enjoy at first. We know from extensive studies that passion follows good performance and result, not vice versa. It seems that feeling passionate is a result of doing good work, not the other way around. Our psychology is fairly universal in the fact that we feel rewarded and motivated by things we're good at and praised for. Have you ever praised or rewarded a child for something and watched a light bulb switch? They start to focus more, work harder, or at least keep moving in that direction. Now, here's the thing that many people do that set themselves up for failure. And that is that they follow a certain path only because they think they should follow it or because other people admire that path. But because it doesn't align with their skills and their talents, they struggle to gain any proficiency and stop feeling motivated by it. They never get to the stage of feeling passionate about it because they never get good enough at it. Eventually, they give up in frustration, just like a kid. And if this sounds familiar, know that you're not alone. I've changed three career paths so far and I'm working on the fourth one because of that reason. Finding your skills is the essential foundation to choosing an enduring goal. If you don't know what you're good at or innately strong at, then there's no other way around it than to experiment with a variety of pursuits until something clicks. Once you have discovered something that aligns with your strength, be it technology, computer programming, I don't know, writing, maybe it's creating music, raising a family, or climbing mountains, then you need to think ambitiously. Ambition has this sly way of nourishing inspiration, hope, and excitement into everything we do towards a goal, just like a spark that gets fanned every time we focus on it. It's a thrilling and quite an addictive feeling, which is the perfect fuel for taking uncommon and brave actions that lead to uncommon success. Nietzsche said that one man's greater morality, in contrast to another's, often lies only the fact that his goals are quantitatively larger. The other man is pulled down by occupying himself with small things. What he means here is that some people's success can be traced back to goals focused on bigger, more ambitious things than people who appear to have less success. So how do we determine whether our goal is ambitious enough? How do we determine that it will accelerate us beyond simple good work and into this uncommon success? And there's a very daring question you can ask yourself to reveal the true trajectory of your ambition. If you attain your goal, Will it merely augment your well-being or will it radically change you and perhaps change the world around you? 
unless you can be certain that the achievement of your goal will change things in your life and lives around you for the better, then your goal is not big enough to reach uncommon success. The higher the goal, the less competition there will be. That's what Tim Ferriss teaches us in his 4-Hour Workweek book. And this is true especially for anyone interested in entrepreneurial-related goals. 99% of people in the world are convinced they are incapable of achieving great things, so they aim for mediocre. The level of competition is thus fiercest for realistic goals, paradoxically making them the most time and energy consuming. The fishing is best where the fewest go, and the collective insecurity of the world makes it easy for people to hit home runs while everyone else is aiming for base hits. There's just less competition for bigger goals. By now, you should be close to having an ambitious goal, a goal that feels intrinsically rewarding. If you have that, then you have enough fuel to propel you closer to this uncommon success we talked about. All that is left in designing your goal is to make it specific. As an old Greek proverb goes, you cannot hold two watermelons with one hand. Multiple goals or even a single goal that is too complex will only add unnecessary complications to your pursuit of uncommon success. Your vision needs to be clear, precise and calculated. Every great man has become great. Every successful man has succeeded in proportion as he has confined his powers to one particular channel. Have you ever written your goals down? If you have, you might have found it quite hard to convey exactly all the small pieces or ideas and all the directions and all the threads of information in one paragraph. If you haven't specified your goals, you'll see how hard it is once you start trying. If you haven't, I urge you to try now. Try to get it all across in the space of one YouTube comment down below. The thing with writing is that it helps us to clarify our ideas because we put space and time into something that's in our fantasy. But we don't just want to write anything to anyone. We want to make sure our idea can be properly understood by a third party, someone who doesn't know us at all. It needs to almost sound like a set of instructions. Since our goal should start to sound like a set of instructions, it's a good idea to add a provisional deadline to it as well. The task expands to the time allotted to it. And if there's no sense of time constraint in reaching your uncommon success, then it has the potential to take a lifetime. And the thing is that we assume you want to reach some uncommon success within a time frame that you can enjoy. So, clarity of destination always increases the chance of arrival. One great piece of work on the subject is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Covey writes that an effective goal identifies where you want to be and in the process helps you determine where you are. It gives you important information on how to get there and it tells you when you have arrived. It unifies your efforts and energy. It gives meaning and purpose to all you do. And it can finally translate itself into daily activity so that you are proactive, you are in charge of your life. You are making things happen each day, the things that will enable you to fulfill your goal. In other words, a successful and achievable goal is like a map of where you are and where you want to be. So let's assume that you have a goal that meets the criteria which to recap is that the goal must feel intrinsically rewarding. The direction must be ambitious, a little stretch beyond where you currently are. And both the goal and the direction must be specific, detailed and focused. So how do we then start moving forward in the direction of this accomplishment? It all comes down to planning and writing things down but nobody ever became successful through logic alone. We need systems, we need routines that turn our otherwise directionless days into building blocks. We need to act on our days instead of our days acting on us. To reach uncommon success, we need to take some kind of real life uncommon action. And this hands-on exhilarating execution will be the topic of our next video, where we will lay out the path one day at a time. 
If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Dimitris and I share insights and tools to help you design a well-lived life.